Cooking with space. Today I'm making spaghetti and meatballs. I'm going to be doing a chunky tomato sauce from scratch, as well as some fine meatballs. Unfortunately, I don't have the equipment to make pasta from scratch. I'm going to be making do with the best available store-bought brand that I could find. So to start, I'm going to take a yellow onion and just get that chopped up nice and fine-like. <laughs> Next, I'm going to dice up some garlic real fine. Use the same method of chopping as we do for the onion to make it a little faster. Check in the pan for some heat. Feels pretty hot, so I'm adding in a large glug of oil. I'm letting the oil heat up a little, and then I'm going to add in the onions. There's a few things I'm looking for for doneness here. I want to see the onions get a little more translucent get some color on them, and I also want to see some fawn start to appear on the bottom of the pan. After the onions are cooked, I'm going to go ahead and add the garlic in. Give that about a minute. I want it to heat up a little to get that raw taste out of there, but I don't want it to burn. Next I'm going to add in some red pepper flakes and oregano. I'm going with dried, but feel free to use fresh. And add a few squeezes of tomato paste in there as well. It's going to really intensify the flavor of the sauce. Then we give that a thorough mixing. Next up, I'm going to add the cans of tomatoes here. Some 28 ounce cans of chunky diced tomatoes. I'm going to stir those around and crush them a bit. I want it to remain pretty chunky, but maybe not this much. If you want a smoother sauce, feel free to buy some crushed up tomatoes or San Marzano tomatoes, which make fantastic sauce as well. I'm going to add some salt to season and draw out some moisture from the tomatoes. I added a cheese rind here, which turned out to be a mistake. Something was missing from my sauce, so the cheese just turned out clumpy and gross. And I also added several bay leaves. Once everything's in the pan, I'm going to crank up the heat to get that to a simmer. Once it's bubbling, I'll lower the heat a little. I've got a great recipe for meatballs somewhere around here. I'm not there. Not there either. Didn't know I had a walk. Looks like I'll have to check the warehouse. Having the pants all the way. No, that's not it either. Please leave your message for Erasmus, why aren't you at the warehouse? It's Ramadan. Oh, right, my bad. Hey, I was looking for the spaghetti and meatball recipe. I couldn't find it. Where's it at? I am working on it, but it is still unstable. Oh, look, I really need it right now, okay? It's for the video. <sighs> One moment. All right, perfect, man. Have a blessed holiday. Come on. It is very unstable. Yeah, yeah. Do not... I've acquired the recipe and, um, huh, I know some of those words. Whatever, we'll just wing it. Perilously open a tube of ground pork and a tube of ground beef. I go 80-20 for pretty much any ground beef that I buy. Instead of milk or parmesan or anything like that, I'm going with ricotta cheese. There's a reason for this. I'm adding oregano, salt, freshly ground black pepper. I saw parsley on the recipe, but I don't have any, so I'm using thyme. A stick of melted butter, a tablespoon of milk, wait, 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 and salt, pepper, thyme, butter, milk, wait, what's happening right now? Yes, sire. Hey, this keeps changing to different recipes, you know anything about that? Did you follow the recipe exactly? Well, I was out of parsley, so I just used thyme. You fool! You've broken the space-time continuum! You have any idea what you've just done? You should never be around food and spices ever in your Ah, oh, whatever, let's just roll with it. One egg, we'll add our breadcrumbs, one egg, balsamic vinegar, that's why I'm not using milk, this would make it curdle. Go ahead and grind our spices in a mortar and pestle. Give it a mix, not too much or it will develop gluten and make chewy cookies, or it will end up feeling a little too pasty. 
going to get a sheet of parchment paper and oil up a baking sheet with that line. I'm also going to get some water boiling for the pasta. Using a scoop, you can scoop your meatballs out and give them a roll in your cinnamon sugar mix. And once the baking sheet is full, we'll place the meatballs on the top rack underneath a broiler set on high. And then we'll move that center rack to the top and go ahead and get your cookies on the center rack at 375 degrees Fahrenheit. When going with box pasta, I usually like this brand here, De Coco. They use brass to do something. We're going to go ahead and get our pasta in the boiling water. Make sure the pasta water is heavily salted. Set the timer for 15 minutes, 25 seconds, 1 hour, and 345 minutes. Checking up on the meatballs. They're browned up, so I'm going to give them a flip and send them back underneath the broiler. Once I've got some color on the other side, I'm going to go ahead and finish the meatballs in the sauce. It's going to boost both the flavor of our sauce and our meatball. The spaghetti is ready. So we'll get that drained out into a colander. It's time to plate up. Now if you prefer, you can toss the noodles into the sauce for a final finishing. You want to do that when they're at about al dente. Me, I like this classic type of presentation. Give it a little bit of freshly grated parmesan cheese on the top there. A little bit of freshly grated nutmeg. A little drop of honey. And then of course the requisite photos. Once I can gain control of this meatball here, I go in for a taste and very, very delicious. And that right there is just a fantastic plate of food. Mm. Mm. Anyways, thank you so much for watching. Please let me know in the comments below if I'm in the correct reality now.